Well, good evening, everybody. Alan Slaughterzinski for the Brevard Sports Network, and we continue with our summer series here tonight, which is an absolute very special guest. I call him the living legend. There's no doubt about it. And I tell you, it's just an honor to have him back on. It's about the third or fourth time he's been with us here on Brevard Sports Network. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome in uh, Mr. Larry Bluestein of Bluestein Recruiting. 50 years, Larry. Congratulations on that. Uh, Larry, but the obvious question that uh, I'm going to need to start with here today is, how's the health? I know you had quite a scare a couple of months ago. Can you get us caught up on how you're feeling, my friend? Yeah, I guess it was just right after I uh, saw you. And thanks uh, again, Alan, for your support and your prayers and um, for having us on. Absolutely. But it was right after I saw you at the state championship game. I went away uh, right the week after. And um, all of a sudden, I wasn't feeling very well. And then um, early, uh, late December, right after Christmas, um, I was diagnosed with uh, double pneumonia. And oh, I had that for like six days in the hospital. Then I got out. And the very next day, I still wasn't feeling well. I went back. And that's when everything kind of exploded. I, I had COVID. They intubated me for oh, well over a week. I was in the hospital for nearly a month and uh, didn't look good. And, um, and I just, you know, I'm a fighter, so I, uh, no doubt. I work and, uh, you know, work really hard and took rehab and, you know, and did everything that they asked me to do. And, uh, here I am. And, uh, you know, my target was to get back for spring and I did that. Uh, I saw 43 schools during spring and then hit the summer running. And I've been to, I went to nine colleges, saw nearly almost 250, 300 teams, uh, had an opportunity to go from everywhere from Tallahassee all the way to FIU and Miami and FAU and UCF and USF. And, and, um, the only thing, the only residuals out of the whole thing is, uh, sometimes I don't taste a lot of food very well. And, you know, and, uh, but other than that, I knock on some type of wood and thank God that I'm back. You know, Larry, I tell you, uh, <laughs> Did the doctor say when you get back, you're going to have to take it slower? <laughs> well, yeah, they did. Well, them and my, my wife and everybody else. But uh, you know what? I'm just, I'm not here for that. I'm, you know, I, either you're going to do something or you're not going to do it. And and I, I did my quote unquote convalescing for like three and a half months. And, you know, and I felt, uh, you know, and, and I do a radio show down here in South Florida every Monday night. And that was the one holdup because I, my breathing was kind of crazy. And I said, you know what, when I go back to the, doing the radio show, I'll be fine. And once I did it, it slowly got better. And, uh, and you know, I mean, that, I just know one way to go, you know, I mean, I can't hold back and, you know, I love, you know, promoting the kids so much and, uh, seeing the coaches and, and watching these, uh, the events and getting a chance to see spring football. And I was very fortunate to have gotten an opportunity to see kids from around the state. And uh, that's, yeah. But to answer your question, they told me, they told me to slow down and they told, and they're still telling me, but um, no, I'm, it's all, it, no, it's I'm not you. When it comes to that. Yeah. That's not you, Larry. And I tell you, it is awfully good to see you. And uh, I'm excited to have you back on here. Um, Larry, I guess, um, you know, for me, uh, I know you said you've been to all these camps. Uh, have you had an opportunity to see some of the guys from Brevard County this year? Yeah, I saw a lot. I've watched Rockledge win the championship. I watched Coco at the UCF. I watched them finish second. I watched uh, the same Rockledge team go, go to USF, the same Coco team go to USF. Had an opportunity to see a, a Bayside and Palm Bay and um, – Man, uh, there's so many other. I'm just trying to maybe think. Melbourne. Uh, maybe got a chance to see Melbourne. Saw Melbourne High School. Yeah, I got a chance to see O'Galley. Um, yeah, it was. It, it, yeah, I saw Melbourne. I because I know uh, Coach Kintai really well. 
you know, from when he played at the University of Miami, yeah. coached in Columbus, so I got a chance to see him. Saw Merritt Island. Um, yeah, I saw quite a few. I had a whole list, but I don't know what, what I did, uh, but. What'd you think about, uh, what, what's your thoughts on uh, Hurley Brown returning back to Brevard County, going to Holy Trinity? Great news, but unfortunately, if he could have come back a month earlier, he might have kind of saved some of those kids, you know, from yeah. Brown, and I saw that, saw Day Day just left for Coco, so he'll do something positive. You know, Hurley's well-respected in the area, and I ran into him last Saturday at the Legends event down at the University of Miami, and um, we talked for a little bit, but uh, yeah, no, yeah, I'll tell you what, it's uh, you get an opportunity to see a lot of these programs from the Space Coast, and I got a chance to see Vieira and also a heritage was out there. So I got a chance to see like a 10 or 11 of the schools from the area. I didn't get a chance to see satellite. I uh, would have liked to or Coco beach, but uh, I'll tell you what, uh, Coco's uh, definitely uh, not sitting tight. Uh, Ryan Schneider went out and uh, got the kid Boda from uh, Daytona beach Seabreeze who I've yeah. known for like three years and I've watched him grow up and uh, kick it, sling it. Uh, and you got to give Coco credit. The last couple of years, they've come with a really, really solid quarterback. Um, and, um, yeah, and they look really good. I mean, you know, they got the kid Bridgewater from uh, Rockledge now, play running back. Um, and then they got Day Day the other day. I saw Farmer. So, and they're really big up front. They're athletic. Um, and they're ready for the run. You know, let I mean, me, they, let me ask you this, uh, Larry. We're here with Larry Bluestein from Bluestein Recruiting. Now with these new metro and suburb divisions, Ryan and company, they don't have to go down and face the Cardinal Gibbons of the Worlds anymore in December. Is there any reason that you can think of? And I tell Ryan and Adam this all the time. I, 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 there's no reason I don't think they should win a state champion. They shouldn't win a state championship this year. Yeah, I agree. You know, And, and it's funny that you bring that up because it's the same thing on, with Naples. Naples has won like 10, 11 games in the, each of the last eight, nine years, but they get into that second or third round of the playoffs and they got to meet Northwestern or they got to meet Central and they don't have to do that this year. So yeah. the South Florida teams uh, are, and that's why a lot of the South Florida teams were angry with this new setup because now it's going to, they have to beat each other up. You see, they're not all going to be able to advance like they have in the past. You have Miami Central, you have Northwestern, you have Chaminade Madonna, who I think right now goes in as the number one team in the state. Better than St. Thomas, not like IMG, because I don't really count them because they don't play for a state title. But I don't see a team that is as loaded as uh, Chaminade Madonna. And, um, and this is a team that, that being said, plays arguably with Venice the toughest schedule in the state. I mean, they play seven state champions along the way or guys, teams that have had the state champions. They opened up with St. John's of Washington, D.C., and they play against Naples and then like Coco. Coco wasn't going to sit down, and they're going to go down to play St. Thomas Aquinas in a game that I think is a very winnable game. I, mean, I do, too. A lot of rebuilding to do. Uh, even though they bring in players, they have to have some chemistry, and we'll find out early because they played St. Joe's Prep uh, right off the bat. St. Joe's Prep's uh, 11th in the nation. Uh, but I think you're right. I think, Coco, this is a year where they can run the table. Uh, they have the talent. They have the depth and uh, and certainly great coaching. You know, I, I think uh, that, that everything that we just said about Coco – Absolutely holds true for Rockledge as well. Now, I know Rockledge lost Bridgewater, but they returned 23 sophomores, Larry, off of that team last year that, um, you know, look, was just youth and inexperience is the only reason they didn't go any further. Those 23 sophomores are now juniors, and I think Wayne Younger does a terrific job over there. And I don't think, you know, that was the thing for Rockledge. Rockledge and Naples were very similar Larry, every year Rockledge would have a fantastic year. They would get through that first or second round, and then, bam, they'd, get, they'd have to go down there and play American Heritage Plantation or one of right. those teams. They don't have to do that this year, and I think they also stand a good chance to win that five uh, suburb. Or that three yeah, suburb. Well, I'm not going to argue suburb. because 
Yeah, I'm not going to argue because I think uh, I think the world of Coach Younger. He, I've known him for years and years when he played at FIU, when he played co- at Coco. Um, he seems like he has the proverbial chip on his shoulder every year, and that's a good thing because – you know, he gets kind of like uh, he's a stepchild to Coco, and oh, you, you know, you're people aren't me. really giving, you never give them a lot of credit. <laughs> uh, really good football program, as you mentioned, a lot of young kids, and he develops a uh, really good talent. And yeah, I agree. And it, you know, it's it was like almost poetic justice that they went over to UCF and and won the team seven on seven title because people weren't talking much about them. And no, even though they didn't do as good at U U uh, USF the I think two weeks later, uh, it is a program. They've they've got some really good kids up front. Uh, they're talented at wide receiver, quarterback wise, offensively. They're really solid, and then defensively, I think they're going to be stronger than people uh, think. So, and yeah, I agree. I think they're going to be one of those teams that are going to give people fits a lot, you know, along the way, and they've shown it. You know, I mean, uh, and I even had a chance to watch Merritt Island, and you know, like I was telling some people, I said. You know, huge drop off from being in the state finals, but you know what? The pedigree for a lot of those kids are still there. They had a huge senior class last year. They lost a lot of guys, but you know what? They bring back some kids with the that that were younger who were in the mix last year that have that you know, that nucleus of winning. And uh, you know, you never know what they could do if they get on a roll. A lot of people look last year; they were picked seventh in the area. I right. look back at the. Uh, at the preseason thing, they were picked seventh in the area. And, uh, you know, they went on to, to do some really good things. I they, they beat Rockledge twice. And, um, yeah, so I, I think that the, the whole area has improved so much. And uh, and certainly Coco is and, and Rockledge are out, way out in front right now. But uh, but you saw what happened with Satellite. And during those couple of years, they went from just obscurity uh, to having two really good seasons, I know they've had a coaching change and things have changed a little bit. Same thing with uh, with uh, Palm Bay. Palm Bay's got some really good kids. They got a lot of athletes. I had a chance to watch them at UCF at U, U at USF as well. Um, I think they've done really well. Coach Owens has done a tremendous job. Uh, he's got some big time kids. He's got athletes. He's got young kids, and that's the one thing. If you look back at Palm Bay, they've They've always thrived with those young kids. And, and, uh, and, you know, way back in the day, I still remember, you know, when they had Mike DeGore and they had all those really Reggie Nelson and all the really good players, uh, they were all young. And then they, they kind of grew together. And, uh, you know, that's, that's how it happens. That's well, how Vieira got to the state finals that year as well. You start with a, a nucleus of young kids, you grow together, and before you know it, you're in the finals. I love what Jake Owens has done at Palm Bay, Larry, because he has come in and changed. Uh, It's kind of like when you get married, right? They say you need something old, something new, and something blue, right, Uh, when you get married. Well, as he has come into this program, he has brought in a new mix of today's student athlete in terms of amping up the social media, changing the uniform and the look. Um, Then he brings in... Dan Burke as an you know as an offensive line coach there, so you get Dan Burke back, the Hall of Famer, the legend, and now up until Blake Boda transferred to Coco, I thought Palm Bay had the best quarterback transfer in the area with Jaden Mobley out of MCC, yeah. and yeah. Uh, so I I think Jake's on to something down there, Larry. I agree. Yeah, and, and you know the whole thing is, is we we know if you if you if you remember the past, everybody when when Bayside opened every and then Heritage opened, they go well they're gonna they're gonna peg Palm Bay a little bit, and they may have at the beginning, but I think now people are going back to that tradition, and like you said with Coach Burke back, uh, they're getting a lot of those old school guys who have brothers, uh, you know, or sons that played under yep. Burke you know, back in the day. And I think that they are kind of bringing that, that mentality back that gave them that five, six year run where they put some really, really good things together. And you know what, it's, they're in an area right now that, you know, uh, I know that, uh, um, you know, you look at uh, Melbourne Central Catholic, I mean, obviously new coach, a guy who knows the area, but lost a lot of players, unfortunately, but that's going to happen. I mean, I live in a community in Dayton Broward where we've had 197 transfers since December in the two counties. You know, yeah, so uh, unbelievable. I, I know how 
the landscape can change really, really quick. And, but, you know, as talented as Coco is, as talented as Rockledge is, you know, schools like Palm Bay are not that far off. I think Vieira is another program. Once they, you know, they get it cranked up, they get kids, uh, you know, from that area. It's an uh, untapped area because of the fact that it's so, you know, it's west and, and a lot of people don't realize. And then look at what happened with Merritt Island. Like I said, pick way in the pack last year. That's a perfect example of your coach in that area to point to them and say, look, you know, I mean, look, here's Merritt Island. I mean, they became pretty much an average team over the years. And look at what happened last year. They played for the 5A state title. And as you know, you were there. You know, they came from a play, a play or two away from really being in that game early. Yeah. You know, I, I tell you, I, I don't know that you know much about this gentleman here, but I, one of the best coaching hires of the offseason here in Brevard County happened at a school that was uh, very much in the mix in the 80s and 90s in this community, and that's the Titusville Terriers with Al Wernicke when he was up there. But John Holmes uh, yes. taking over at Titusville. I couldn't have been happier for that program because if anybody's going to resurrect the Titusville Terriers, it's going to be John Holmes, Larry. Yeah, well, I agree. It's, but And they're also in that area, too, where – you know, they're kind of far removed uh, where if they if they can get kids north of them and, and obviously they're battling astronaut and astronauts had a, a plethora of talent throughout the years. But I'd like to see uh, Titusville back on the map. It's I been a too. really long while. I remember back in the day when they, they were playing for region titles, uh, you know, and, and I um, I can't. Uh, the, I think it's Williams, Tracy Williams, the running back. I went yeah. to Michigan. I think. Yep. So. I remember them. They've had talent. Uh, just see, the whole thing is in this day and age, a lot of those kids are, you know, the one thing I always get, Alan, is, you know, when I go see these teams uh, that have fallen off a little bit, they'll say, hey, you know, we got some young kids. But the, the reality of it is you got to hold on to those young kids. And yeah, you got them as freshmen and sophomores, but when they become juniors and seniors, they got to still be on your roster. And, you got to, you know, I mean, Titusville can uh, develop a young group of kids, but the objective over a four-year period is to hold on to those kids because you know how it is. I mean, you look at, you know, some of the schools, uh, you know, in, in every area, but in your area, you know, like here's Astronaut. Astronauts had some kids, and then all of a sudden they got in their junior, senior year, and they weren't there anymore. And that's, that's the one thing about Titusville. Yeah, I'd like to see Coach Holmes do a great job because – Good guy, hard worker, um, you know, wants the best for the school. And it's, uh, like I said, they're in an area where if they just go a little bit north uh, the, and get some kids, it may be a little bit too far for them to go to any of the schools down further south. And, and they could hold on to those guys and build something special. You know, if you win, kids will stay. Yeah, that's the key. And, that you know, it's funny because I was talking to Day Day's brother, Tay Farmer, and I asked him if he had any advice for student athletes, Larry, that are in the recruiting process. And he looked at me and he said, Mr. Allen, could I give coaches some advice? And I thought, uh-oh, uh, where, where are we going with this? And, the, and what he said to me, Larry, was he goes, looking back on my high school career, if I could offer one piece of advice to coaches, it would be to schedule tougher because kids yeah. want to play against the best. I couldn't believe that. I, but – as what what are some of the reasons? I mean, aside from winning, Larry, is to you know transferring to play against tougher competition. Uh, what are some of the reasons these these transfers have blown up over the last five years? Well, here's a funny thing too, because you look at schools like St. Thomas Aquinas, kids will transfer there. Kids who were starting other places will transfer there to sit. Believe it or not, just crazy. to be part of that program, and it you know it blows my mind. You know, I mean, because, you know, because St. Thomas has a track record, obviously, of, of putting kids into college, whether they're starters or not. And people will go there. And I B Bishop, that's always kind of confused Bishop me a little bit. Bishop, Bishop Gorman's backup quarterback was the starting quarterback in Oregon. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, we're talk talking about – I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead there. But I didn't want to lose that one. But you're right. No, 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 no. I understand. But the whole thing is – is yeah, you don't always have to win. Yes, you got to play a competitive schedule, but also the off season is huge. 
And if you're not taking these kids to seven on sevens and to team camps and such, you're going to lose them because they're going, everybody else is doing it. And I know you have old school coaches. We have plenty around the state. You look at Bill Castle at Lakeland and you look at Dormany over at Trinity and Jeff Bertani at North Miami Beach. They're old school guys. They, oh, well, I don't need seven on sevens. I don't need it. But they figure out now that they do. Uh, Mark Wandolo, who was a tremendous coach for years in this state, uh, he was one of those guys when he was, whether he's at South Ridge or Cypress Bay or Chaminade Madonna, he realized that, you know what, I got to take these kids around. Uh, we've got to compete in the off season because if we don't, they're going to go with somebody else. And these all-star things, I've never been, maybe it's the OG in me, but I've never been a big fan of the, the seven-on-seven all-star teams because – what that does is you get kids from all over the area. And then what happens is they go away and they'll be talking and, you know, hey, man, you need to come to our school, you know, that type of thing. And there's no college, there's no coaches around to say, hey, you know what, don't listen to that. Happens all of a sudden all they have a good time. They stay up all night. You know, they watch TV, they play games and stuff. And before you know it, the next day, you know, he's, uh, Junior's calling mom and he goes, you know what, I got to go to X school. Uh, yeah. It seems can be good i like like the guys that go there see that's the one thing that a lot of the coaches uh don't like and their their rebuttal to me on that is well if you don't if you don't make the program attractive enough then you know don't blame the kids and and that's not always true because there's there's programs that are really working hard throughout the entire year i mean the heck you know you look at schools like coco beach i mean obviously they're working as hard as they can you know, I mean, with the, with the talent they have, so you can't blame the coaches. It's just it becomes it's part of the structure now. And then you know, I mean, it, obviously, you know, getting kids like Coco did, and people are like confounded that you'd get a kid from an hour and fourteen minutes, hour and fifteen minutes away. You know, I mean, uh, you know, in Boda, and I talked to he and his dad at UCF. I've known him for a long time. He just wants – I mean, Pat Brown's a good coach. I can't take anything away from Coach Brown at Seabreeze. Uh, but I think it got to the point where he wasn't getting the exposure. Uh, you know, and that's one of the things that all parents will say to me. Well, he's not getting exposed here. And you know, if we, we figure at, you know, Coco, he'd get a better opportunity. And I understand that. But the whole thing is, is there are schools, and I'm not mentioning any names – that'll bring you over, get you offers, which really are not committable, just to put you out on the radar. Because if one school said, well, wait a minute, Louisville's offering, I'm going to offer them. And that's the one thing that a lot of schools are doing. Coaches will yell at me, oh, no, that's just part, that's part of the thing. It's not really part of the thing. you got to be honest yeah. with these kids. Yep. And if you're just bringing them over to get an offer – you know, give them an, uh, you know, an offer that's not committable because no one else knows because college coaches can't uh, comment on kids who are recruits. So no one really knows. You just got to know, uh, you know, know the deal that, hey, this kid can't play uh, power five, but he got a power five offer, which is going to bring in the Akron's and the Miami of Ohio's and the FAU's and the FIU's of the world. And, um, and that's the one thing I preach and I say one thing. And I and, and in between going to all those large schools, I went to Southeastern University in Lakeland. I went to Warner. I went to Weber International. I've been to St. Thomas uh, uh, University, Florida Memorial, Kaiser, all schools that are NAIA schools. And I and I do preach to to, to your audience and to everybody listening is 95 percent of any high school roster will not play Division One football. They're all going to play. NAIA Division Two, II, Division Three type of, uh, of football, and that's that's one of the things. On the screen, you see Larry's website, LarryBluestein.com. Uh, I want to go back to Blake Boda for a second because I had him and Cedric Hawkins in studio the other day, and we had just a tremendous, tremendous forty-minute conversation with those two young men. And the thing that stuck out to me with Boda was, and look, Larry. You know, the quarterback position is a cautionary tale at the moment because there's no guarantees that even with Boda coming to Coco that he's going to get offers and or, or these D1P5 offers because as good as he is, 
you know, Davin Widener and DJ Arroyo were right there, sure. right? And right. so, you know, D Widener walked on at UCF, and then, it, you know, once Ole Miss got wind of this, then they went after him and gave him the full ride. So that's where Davin is now. But right. Boda says the other day, and I loved his answer, um, it wasn't so much about exposure for him as it was about he has to prove himself he felt against tougher competition and so, you know, these quarterbacks out here all across the state, there's there's no guarantees, no matter how good they are, with the way the transfer yeah. portal is. And it really blows my mind that kids like Boda and Widener weren't going into their senior seasons with 20 offers. Yeah, well, you know, that's a good point. Uh, you know, I mean, because I watched, uh, I watched Widener a lot. Uh, I always felt that he had the tools, you know, to play at the next level. He's deadly accurate, had a really good arm, uh, and, and was a thinker. Well, the Boda kid, the thing is, he's being left-handed, and that ball comes off a little bit differently. Uh, he's got really good spin to it. He's a, and, and he's a thinker. He's a smart kid. I think he's pretty much graduated to the point where he only has to take a few school uh, uh, courses. He's graduated, uh, yeah. Yeah, which puts him uh, on a, in a position where he, other than to go to practice, he doesn't come down to have to come down to Coco every day. Right, and be there by seven, you know, seven thirty. Because anything that he's going to take now, I believe, is online. Yeah, and um, you know, so it it, it it's going to work out for him. Like I said, good family, really supportive, and you know, he, and and he could play. And you know, I kept pointing out at USF to some of the coaches at USF. You know, they've already recruited and they got a couple of, you know, quarterback. But I said, here's a guy. And people don't realize the word of mouth. When you go to these schools like a UCF or you go to Miami or Florida, Florida State, there's a lot of coaches who have a lot of ties. Yep. And even though they don't, I, they can't <coughs> fit you in at the time, they could call up a East Carolina or West Carolina where uh, Kerwin Bell is. And, you know, that's that's one guy I, you know, I had him on the show and we were talking about that very thing that, you know, he's won wherever, you know, he's gone, whether it be Jacksonville without any scholarships to Valdosta, which is, was a smaller program. And now he's at Western Carolina, but his philosophy is to go after these kids that nobody else is going after, but can play. And he came away with, I think, one of the steals he's got, he came away with a running back from South Florida, Miramar High School, this kid Reed, who I think is a power, he's a power five kid, but he came down. They, you know, they, they showed the kid love before anybody else got involved in it. And see, that's what happens. And and you're going to see that, I'm sure, with with why, with um, uh, Blake, uh, somewhere down the line, someone's going to just say, you know what, I like this kid. And I, I think he can develop over time. And, you know, you you can't teach the size that he has. You can't teach the, you know, the, the accuracy that he has. You know, it's the only thing separating him. And the game will speed up. The game will speed up because, you know, Coco's got a tougher schedule. Uh, but he's but here's a kid that played mainland. He's played a lot of schools. But I, I think it, it really enhances him. You know, I'm not, I'm not against transferring. I'm just tra against transferring for the wrong reasons. And when – when somebody's not offering you at school A and you go to school B and then all of a sudden, like I said, there's some schools that will throw you the bone and get you an offer, but it's not committable. I have a problem with that because all you're doing is you're forcing the situation. You're taking the kid out of a comfort zone, you know, that he was in, probably knew a lot of these kids since grade school. So, yeah, those are the things I'm against. I'm not against anybody trying to help themselves. I'm just against, uh, you know, these guys going to just go. And then, you know, there's got to be a purpose behind it. Here with uh, Larry Bluestein, one or two more for the living legend here. Uh, Larry, a couple of months ago, Louisiana Athletic High School Commission approved name, image, and likeness for the high school level. What a disaster at the high school level, Larry. Tell me, it's did you, did, did, I mean, I know it's going to end up here in California, Texas, and Georgia, but how bad is this for high school football? not good uh, no. you know as somebody and i'm not being the old guy now you know because that's you know when i when i bring up things like that and yesterday I had a conversation about ucla and usc going into the big 10 i said logistically it's a nightmare how are you ever going to have any recruiting base 
you know, when the closest school to you is 1,500 miles in Nebraska and a time zone change, right. two time zone changes. So I'm not trying to poo-poo things, but the thing is, is something like that, all it's going to do, I mean, when I read that X amount, this kid's getting $11 million uh, to go to college, to go to college. It's not amateur you know, I mean, sports. What is that? I mean, and, and, you know, Jimbo might have apologized to, to Nick Saban, but he meant what he said. Yeah. You know, I mean, he meant, but he's doing the same. So obviously, you know, it's a glass house thing. But I understand the frustration. But, you know, it's sort of like you got to play the game now. But I don't like it in high school because these kids are going to be, I think that is going to take the discipline out of the game. Kids going to go, hey, you know what? I've already got X amount of dollars in hand. And you know what? The University of Miami's is kind of uh, taking advantage of it because they have a, a somebody to work it. I mean, their their highest uh, NIL deals are the two girls that came from Fresno State uh, who are on Tic Tac, the uh, Cavender twins. Yep. Who have 5.6 million uh, followers and subscribers to their Tic Tac channel. And they're coming to all the way across the country and they're being compensated very well. You know, I mean, they're living yeah. in. Yeah. And, and it's just, it's really tough. You know, and now I saw the other day, Alan, and this, this boggles my mind to the, to the ultimate is these high school kids. Now they're putting a value on their NIL deals. I know. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh. Oh, it's you know, crazy. I saw a kid, isn't that, yeah, it's, you know, it's taken. It's when, taken. when these kids at the high school level, we know the issues that they have in the state of Florida with paying our coaches. When these kids will walk into camp one day with a five or $10,000 NIL deal as a senior in high school, making twice as much as their head coach, I got a problem with that, Larry. Yeah, well, that's I, a I, discipline I, problem. That's I, where you I, lose discipline. I, I just do. All right, as we get set to wrap up here, Larry, uh, I tell you, man, um, I just couldn't be happier to be able to do this interview with you. Um, I looked the other day on Max Preps, who released the, uh, the top 100 teams in the country. And, of course, Florida and Texas tied with 16 each. And the usual suspects are on this list here. St. Thomas, IMG, Miami Central, uh, you, you know, Jesuit, Chaminade, Madonna, Lakeland, um, who are, give me a couple of surprises this year. Who are the Merritt Islands and satellites uh, this year uh, that we can look out for across the state or maybe even here in Brevard? Well, I'll give you one, one from South Florida, then I'll give you another one. Uh, Western High School, it's okay. located in Davie. They've been knocking on the door for years. They're, I mean, they're an 8 age, or they're a big school. They're probably, you know, 3,300, 3,400. But they are loaded. They've got a kid who's going to break uh, the Broward County passing record this year. Um, Colin Hurst, he's going to go into the 11,000-yard career uh, range. And uh, they've got a great defense. They've got talent. they got uh, uh, the kid Moss, whose his father played in the NFL. They've got really, really good bloodlines. Another team I think that really is going to emerge from the pack is Tallahassee Lincoln. They've been working extremely hard. I've had an opportunity to watch them throughout the year uh, and throughout the summer. They've got coaches that came in from, uh, you know, a lot of different areas and, and, and have done a, an outstanding job. And certainly I think that they've got a chance to be extremely special. And I'll tell you another team. It, it's not a new team, but a team that's kind of been hiatus. And you had uh, Coco had a chance to watch them last year is Vero Beach. I mean, they're loaded in every way. They just got a, a, a quarterback transfer from South Florida, uh, you know, to come up, the kid Aronson. Um, and then, obviously, you know, the, the team that, that I think that was in the spotlight last year, reached the state finals, that is going to be better than they were last year is Tampa Bay Tech. And uh, that's a team that is well coached. Um, they, they've got kids from all over the place. Uh, and I think they're going to be special. Now, your area, you've got, obviously, the teams that I mentioned. I think the team that could start to emerge is somebody we talked about. I think Palm Bay could start coming out of that, you know, end of the pack to the middle of the pack and maybe within a year or two be in, that, in the mix uh, 
but uh, definitely uh, and, and got to give Hurley some time to build that back up. But I think if Hurley came two months ago, it would have been a whole different story. Yeah. Because Holy Trinity had a lot of kids. You know, I mean, it's a smaller school, but you're going to get what you get. But I think that they had the nucleus. Uh, I hope Coach Brzezinski does really well, too, down the line. But you can't, like I said, you can't start off by losing kids. No. Once you start losing kids, you, you're further in the hole. But, uh, yeah, I would take a look at Western. I would take keep an eye on Tallahassee Lincoln as a team that, uh, you know, they've been – those are team. that's a team that in the past, you know, had some really, really good kids. And, uh, you know, in Orlando, I, you know, Seminole is still going to be a beast. People don't realize how, how – uh, potent they are that's another team that is is always going to be uh you know in the mix so there's a couple of teams if uh if, if i think of any during the year i'll definitely let you know well you know this won't be the last time you and i talk before the season starts tampa bay tech their only loss last year came to st thomas in that 7a title game so yeah. uh yeah tampa bay tech i remember they came over here a couple of years ago was an underdog to Derek smith's vera hawks and ran the clock on them in the second quarter uh i was you just, got dudes <laughs> yeah i mean there was no i could look i looked at them and warm up and went uh-oh this ain't gonna be good but uh Larry, man thank you so very much for taking time out and it's good to, you just look great and I couldn't be happier about it. And uh, we will definitely catch up again before the start of the season, my friend. Once again, uh, LarryBluestein.com. Larry, keep doing what you're doing. Alan, my pleasure. I always love coming on with you. You're a really good guy. Plus, you do a lot for the kids, and I enjoy that. And uh, thanks so much. Have the, a great rest of your summer, and we'll, we'll catch up. I love All coming on. All right, Larry Bluestein, and again, throughout the course of the interview, you've seen all of the social media information on the bottom of the screen for Larry, and of course, his website, LarryBluestein.com. So, for Caleb Brown, for Larry Bluestein, I'm Alan Slaughterzinski. This has been Brevard Sports Network, one-on-one -on -one summer series. Have a great night, and as always, make it a sports night.